<laughs> hey, how you doing? Are you, you look like you're ready to go somewhere after this. Are you, you all ready to go somewhere? What I do. do. I have. A, I do have a full day. Um, it's kind of funny because I don't always. I don't put makeup on typically, and so I try to schedule things that I need to wear makeup for in the same day. Like, um, it doesn't always work out that way, but. Um, so yes, I have a whole bunch of cameos to record after this, and then I go shoot another podcast, and cool. then I've got a meeting, and then um, and then I go back to mom mode. <laughs> but you know, I only want to get ready uh, once in a day, and it's I, really only I, because I have a lip color on that you think I look any more done up than I normally do. <laughs> All right, the, they're <laughs> truly the, the only difference. <laughs> the, well, there are so many different things that that are, are funny to me about this show already. One is, as you mentioned, the lipstick, and we talk about different products that you use all the time. And mm -hmm. so I thought, all right, maybe this is you know, a new lipstick that you tried and we're, we're talking about it. And two is the shirt you're wearing reminds uh -huh. me uh, a little bit of Housewives of New York. And we're going to get into that later in the show because there's someone uh, on the show. I got to ask you about the way she dresses. And uh, you sound different. For some okay. reason, you sound different today. Okay, so I hope everybody can notice. And I had been saying to you guys this entire time, I don't sound right. I my voice cuts out. It sounds crackly. I have the same microphone as Dave. People, I yeah. have the exact same microphone, and he sounds so great. And <laughs> Dave and Josh kept telling me, "No, it's his voice. It's his radio voice." And I'm like, "No, the sound is different. Something's different." So, anyways, we have a guest on today, and Dave was running her through the microphone settings, and in the actual app StreamYard that we use to broadcast this show. So I was like, oh, what the hell? I went through mine because I knew my sound was not good. I have not been using this beautiful microphone. <laughs> I have been attached to my internal laptop microphone this entire time. So every time you can't understand what I'm saying or it was not clear, it's not because I don't have a radio voice. <laughs> You don't smoke cigars because, to get your voice deep. <laughs> it's because I wasn't using the right microphone. Oh, you sound typical. different. We'll you sound great. Typical Nicole things. No, Speaking I thought you sounded typical. fine before. Yeah, that's what. No, blew me away. no, my voice would like you couldn't. It would go the the sound would go in and out, and I couldn't figure it out. Well, you know, simple settings make all the difference in the world. There you go. But, which brings me to typical Nicole. So, um. I'm notorious for getting really weird tan lines. And I hope, I know I'm not the only one. I cannot possibly be the only one. I'm just willing to talk about it. Okay. Um, I, so like during the pandemic, for instance, I decided to try to lose weight and get in shape and like just walk all my troubles away. And um, by the end of the pandemic, I had like really tan arms from the sleeves down and really tan legs from like my shorts down. That's but the me. rest of me, it looked like I was wearing like a white wetsuit, like a short That's suit. Me. You know, those yeah. short. <laughs> I do this all the time. I get flip flop tan lines, you know, from wearing flip flops. So I stopped wearing flip flops because it was just so embarrassing if I ever had to go anywhere. Look, perfect example. Check that out. Yeah. Okay. I just get these. So on 4th of July, um, you know, the sun had finally come out. The sun hadn't been out. And um, we were out at the beach watching the parade. And I wore a slip-on, a closed-toed slip-on shoe. And from where the shoe ended to where my pants ended, I got burned. So I've had this really weird, like, ankle sun, like, tan line. And yesterday, I decided to pack up all my computer, all my emails, all my phone calls, and I was like, I'm going to do them from the beach. And I went to the beach, set up my shade tent, but I had my feet out in the sun. So I had bright white toes, and that that par portion of my foot that was covered from my shoe, I was yeah. like completely fried, <laughs> like completely sunburned yesterday. So I go to CVS, <laughs> from the beach to CVS, and I'm like, I, I have never purchased like one of those aloe, you know, sunburn relief yeah. things because I have an aloe plant and I just kind of go to the natural stuff. And I was like, I need something more. I need something I could put in the refrigerator. I know we've talked about this. I'm obsessed with putting my products in the refrigerator and the freezer. And I got this product. Okay. 
And okay. this is just the box because, of course, the actual tube is in the freezer waiting for me. <laughs> um, and it is put out by Quest Products. And it doesn't have any of the junk. Because I went in there and started reading the ingredients of all this, like, sun burn relief stuff and it, it was like full of chemicals full of alcohol and i'm like how are you going to put that on raw skin doesn't that sound terrible and just because it's a gel sure you're probably going to get some like quick relief but so anyways i took a chance on this and i gotta tell you i had some relief my feet the tops of my feet were on fire on fire and i put this on and um there's echinacea in it as well so it's not only just the aloe and um it took some of the red out it really did not only did it like the clear gel completely cool my feet and i am not saying to go get sunburned yeah <laughs> we talked about sunburn and sunblock and all this before but when an accident happens and this was a cvs purchase here's the qr code if you guys are interested or need it um, I found it to be a lifesaver. I got to go to sleep and I couldn't feel the burning feet and it was great. Great product. All right. Let me ask you, because obviously you made a living out in the sun. Were you always one of those people that could just tan naturally? Did you put stuff on? Do you look back and go, I can't believe the way I used to tan? Or was it always, you know, that the studio would take care of the color skin they want you to have? <laughs> no, they don't take care of your, your skin color. I, um, once I, once my skin is all exposed to the sun, it's pretty strong and it's like used to it. And I really don't burn very much. It's just that new, like when you just exposed all your pale whiteness to the, to the sun, it will burn. Um, but as a kid, it was like, how dark can you get? You yeah. know, how dark, can, I, it we always wanted like these creases in our hips. Like, so when you bent over, if it had like a charcoal effect, like that's what, we, that was the goal. So it was baby oil. I mean, I, we would have silver blankets. Like we, we sat there, but we would put like zinc on um our lips and nose. So we'd all have like <laughs> zinc. <laughs> we like lifeguards. I mean, yeah. we were like baby lifeguards at the beach and um the rest was all oiled up like bring it bring it so um yeah it's terrible it's a terrible habit but we all did it though back in the day we didn't know anybody it was always a race to see how dark could we get i remember, I remember uh, i didn't do the baby oil but i did the hawaiian tropic which was the same thing yeah. you know you just it, it was it was ridiculous to think you're like a basically a chicken just cooking in the sun just baking like an yeah. egg and um you know i don't can't deal i totally respect people that do the self tanning um, and they get that fake tan. I just can't do it. I hate the smell. I hate the feeling. I feel sticky. I feel gross. It gets all over things and it, um, wears off unevenly. I'd rather just be pale. So, um, anyways, you don't want to see me naked. I have very, very funny tan lines. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of very people think tan lines, tan lines are sexy though. Some, a lot some of guys, people do. yeah, they do. They do. A lot of guys will say that, that the, the tan know. lines are important. Yeah. That's, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you found some relief. At least you can sleep at night. That's what people don't know, realize. Hey, I'm, I'll make it. And then you realize when it's time to go to sleep, you cannot sleep. Yeah, whether it's just your on feet, fire. your knees, yeah, just... your shoulders. You're like, oh, my God, I can't roll over. What do I do now? Yeah. Absolutely. Luckily, it was just the tops of my feet. But I knew it was going to drive me crazy. And I was like, how am I going to wear shoes tomorrow? Yeah. All these things, all these things you think about. So anyways, I loved sunburnt. It, were, it gave me some relief. And um it doesn't have a whole bunch of junk in it. So I, I loved that. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, so a, a lot going on and you and I will get into to more stuff down the road as far as in this show, as far as what's going on with what you're watching. But also I want to ask you about a little bit about the writer strike again, as we do this show, of course, it's still in full effect. And then comic cons in the city where I'm at right now. And a lot of people are, are obviously making moves to say, this is a chance to make some money that doesn't affect the writers and support the cause at the same time. So I want to get into a bunch of this stuff today, but, but we do have a guest today. I'll let you introduce the guest. We do. We have a great guest. Um, uh, if you don't follow her, I mean, I do, uh, she has a great, um, Instagram. It's called celebrity style guide. And, um, I'll let her explain it to you better, but she's been around and been doing this for a very long time. And um, I love it because I, I just kind of, as I get older, I kind of lose touch of like what's cool because 
I can get mixed up with what my 25 year old thinks is cool and what my 11 year old thinks is cool. What I think is cool. Like it just, it gets very blurry and I'll put something on and I think I feel great. And my 11 year old be like, you know, and I'm like, you're 11. You know, back, back up. We don't wear the same things. So she'll say like grandma. And I do have a little bit of like a grandma style. I like, I like vintage things. So, um, but Heather Campbell Green is with us. Not only is she gorgeous, she's smart, and she's a great businesswoman. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, hey, Heather. For having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So, Heather, as I was saying, she, you have this great um, – I, I watch you on Instagram because that's kind of my go-to. That's what I do. Um, yeah. And where where can everybody find you just to – My handle is at Celeb Style Guide. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm living right now, and I'm I'm having a blast over there. So thank you for following. I was so excited when I saw that you followed me. It was a good day. <laughs> I was like, oh well, I was God. excited, honestly, when I saw you were following me, too, and I was like, oh. And uh, <laughs> I, just, I, I get excited over things like that, too. Yeah. And um, so Heather will find out, like, what a celeb is wearing right now, and she will find – either the exact right, correct me, I'll let you explain better. She'll find that outfit and tell you where you can get it. And because like people like me, I don't know how to shop anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot kind of going on behind the scenes. People want to know exactly what they're wearing. They want look for less options. They want styling choices. Um, a lot of people get really overwhelmed by their own closet, which is kind of funny because they purchased everything in there, right? But they go in and they're like, does this go with this? Does this? So um, I started a subscription service. That's the only way I could think to do it where I could really address people's styling concerns where, you know, they'll show me a picture of their closet and I'll put stuff together and we'll pull pieces. And it's really fun. I have a great community. I, I might need to sign up for that. <laughs> I do that. I'll go in and I buy a lot of vintage because, you know, I have a 25 year old who's in the fashion industry mm -hmm. and it's all about sustainability yeah. and I get it. And I'm on board, you know, we don't use, much plastic in this house we, we we're all about it so i do buy like recycled i love that and, um but then i'll buy all this all this crap and my daughter will go well what are you gonna wear with it you know yeah it looks yeah. super full but you got nothing else to go with it so i might need you for that yeah so I'm heather, here. I'm here. heather has worked on some of the best shows around yeah um, doing wardrobe and so really give lucky. us some give us some background with that yeah well can i start with you because we talked a little bit about it on the phone when we met and it's such a full circle moment for me because you and i are similar in age and i grew up with you and my first real hunting of an outfit was one of yours and i think i told you you were like in a scene where you're in like your a junior high it was like chad mccann era i don't know if that <laughs> so yeah and you were in head to toe like pink scrunchie you had a pink shirt on pink skirt pink lace tights and i was like that outfit is ever and i made my mom take me to the mall and get the whole look and then, you know, of course, I, all my friends watched the show. We all loved you. And I showed up and I was in full Marcy. And I, I mean, they were just like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, yeah. So that's kind of where it started was looking at TV and movies and loving their style. And, you know, stylists and costumers, they're my I love them because they they just, you know, they put everything together. And, you know, it's kind of kind of easy to say, okay, I can put that with that with that and, you know, follow that kind of blueprint, if you yeah. will. So I started doing it probably like fifth or sixth grade. And then um, I had uh, my daughter and I needed a stay at home mom job. And so I would sit like on the couch and I would write everything that was on friends. So I would see Courtney and Jenna I'd be like, okay, those guys, that's a, you know, I, I can see the logo on that shirt. And I'd write it all down. I'd go to the internet, which was brand new. I mean, the brand, it, I mean, this was 2005, you guys. So I would go on the internet and find everything that they were, buy it, and then get in a couple sizes. And what didn't fit me, I put on. E so I started a little, little stay at home mom job, you know, kind of, it was called Seen on the Stars, which I think I still have that handle. But, um, but yeah, it was just, it was really fun. And then my husband, he's in IT and he said, I'm going to build you a website. And I was like, nobody 
is as weird as me. Nobody cares what these people are wearing as much as me. And he's like, no, if you care, there's got to be an audience for it. Right. So he built me this pink and purple, you know, because I was in charge of the uh, website. And we put everything on the website and it started to get attention. And um, my first show that I worked on was Friends. And Deborah McGuire's assistant, you know, I contacted her. I found her information. I was like, love the show. I have this little business I'm thinking about starting. What do you think? And she's like, oh my God, I love that idea. And so that's where it started. She sent me pictures, Polaroids of Jen and Courtney and tell everything they're wearing the week before the show aired. And I'd put it on the website and it was off to the races. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely hey. amazing. <laughs> so so hey, hey, real quick, Nicole, I got like three things I, I, I want to hit her with. Number yeah. one is it's so funny that you dropped Marcy because that's the first time I saw Nicole too. Mm -hmm. And I was, and, and that was, that I was mean, like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. you know, that, that was like, I, I told Nicole last week, I said, how come there aren't more episodes with Marcy? And then um, the other part is in school, do you, was it a goal of yours to win best dressed in the yearbook? But, uh, not at the time. My goal was to find exactly what Marcy was wearing or Sam <laughs> or like, cause I didn't want to, I wanted to go in there authentic. Like I was like this, right? And so, yeah. and then everyone would kind of copy, where'd you get that? Oh my gosh. And I kind of got that little, that little validation that I was like, I'm on something, but I didn't know what I was on to. I had no idea. It was just, you know, I just loved All right. it. And, and here and just again from just have a, have a ton of friends that that are girls and we, we talk <laughs> about what they wear because I have friends who never you never see them in the same thing twice and I was like how do you do it you know how do you do it on a budget and be able to mix and match and everything yeah. else but you never see them wearing the same clothes twice mm -hmm. I would imagine if I was a girl you'd be my best friend <laughs> if I could talk to you only you but at the same time, you'd be my worst enemy going to a party with you thinking you're judging everybody at that party of what they're wearing and the mistakes they made and, and how terrifying that would be. Okay. So, okay. So first of all, that's not me. I am a t-shirt and jeans. Like I, I'm not a, you know, head to toe label. Got to, got to put this together. There's no rules. I think you should be comfortable. I think you should love what you're in. I think um, if it speaks to you and you like it, wear it. There's no rules. I'll wear white after Labor Day. I don't care. Like I, yeah. you know, like I just I I think we've got we've gotten to the point where we're embracing self-expression, which I love because people do it, you know, through clothing. And um, I I don't judge people for what they're. I I like what I like, and I, I'll see someone and be like, oh my gosh, I love what you're wearing. But I never look at someone and go, oh my gosh, they're clueless. Like that's my I don't go there <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Because who am I? Just because I mean, who am I to say you know? that but um and as far as i love that you said that you never see the same thing twice because you absolutely they're just wearing it differently they're tying it they're tucking it they're layering it they're putting a blazer over it um there's ways to repurpose and reuse the stuff in your closet to update it and um that and that's kind of fun because you, you have your pieces that you really love right and your go-to's and you don't want to be like oh someone so saw me in this but if you put some necklaces on or a blazer or a sweater, you can rework that piece. And that's, that's fun. I think. It's funny. It's funny that you guys say that because sometimes I'll wear, I'll just like, I'll, I'll kind of fall into this rut of like, whatever's right there. I just keep rewearing these same things. And I've looked at my daughter before and I go, did I wear this last week? <laughs> You know, because yeah. we're going, because, you know, we have special, you know, we have special classes and things like that, that we have scheduled mm -hmm. weekly. And I'm like, did I wear this? Well, she's like, I don't know. I'm like, oh yeah, who cares really? Yes. But um, yes, it's, and mm -hmm. it's weird about the rewearing because there's such a stigma of doing it like on the red carpet or like, so that's why so many actors and actresses borrow clothes and don't purchase because they don't wear them twice. There is that side. That's not your normal mm -hmm. everyday. Yeah. That's, that's a more elevated. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. <laughs> Dave to that, a lot of people borrow clothes because mm -hmm. um they 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 need to switch them out and swap them out. And there is no reason to spend that much money when you're not gonna keep the gown. Absolutely. It, well, and to your point, Nicole, I think that's um part of the reason people are drawn to what I do, because especially in the last couple of years, I think a lot of people were kind of stuck on the TV and you know on the internet and we were very disconnected, right? We really felt like you know, who, where do I belong? Where do I fit? Where do I, you know, who are my people anymore other than my little, you know, people that are right with us. And I think 
the idea of borrowing from someone's closet or borrowing from your friend's closet is such a I've done it since I was little. I was always taking stuff out of my sister's closets, out of my friend's closets. I mean, there's something that's, it's kind of it's cool. And when I felt like I could borrow, like from your closet, from Marcy's closet, I was like, ooh, now we're friends. Like I was like, now I got a buddy. I'm best friends with Marcy. What? You know, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it kind of, it brought a sense of community to, through clothes, if that, if that makes any sense. It's like borrowing from a celebrity's or someone you admire's closet can feel good. One of yeah. my best friends, literally going back to what you just said a second ago, Nicole, what she does is she writes down the date that she wore something and everyone who was in the room who saw her wear it that day. So she never, oh. ever wears the same things in front of those people. Oh. But it, she's not in your situation, Nicole. Nicole, you leave the house and you're being photographed. But oh. at the same time, whether it's going to work or it's going to a party, she writes down everything every day of what she wrote and when she, when, I mean, what she wore and when she wore it. Really? <clears throat> I don't think she should care that much. There's no shame in, uh, you know, re-wearing clothes, especially when they're nice clothes. And, you know, we are talking about sustainability. Th this is a real thing these days. So it's like, you know, to just be throwing stuff into landfills and just buying new clothes all the time. It's, um, you know, it's not really very smart. It's not really very savvy. So um, tell her to care less. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like Heather said, like, just rework it. And like, who cares? Mm -hmm. And you know what? She's thinking that people are going to remember. People might not even remember that that's what you were wearing. So it's like, mm -hmm. I don't think there should be so much emphasis on it. And it's weird because like I, um, when I was younger, I just wore whatever I felt like wearing, whatever I thought was cute, whatever, like I was drawn to, I wore it. I didn't even really think, did it all go together? And then um, as an adult, um, you know, I went through some autoimmune issues and like some uh, gain weight, and trying all these medications. And like, so clothes were like the enemy for a while for me. Just like every time I put something on, I felt so uncomfortable. I didn't think anything looked good. And it sort of stunted my whole fashion thing. I was like, okay, I'm just going to wear sweats every day. You know, that's going to be my, that's going to be my solution is I'm just going to be comfortable. So I'm finally at a place again where I can like take clothes out of my closet and put them on and like be happy about it. Yeah. So I think that you kind of got to not really care. Like who cares if you wore the same dress? I don't know. I agree. Yeah. Right. And um, so taking pictures. So she wants to kind of not cold turkey that habit <laughs> what a good a good thing to do which i do is when i'm traveling or when i'm going somewhere i will lay everything kind of on the floor or on the bed and i'll take a picture of my outfits because that's when i know what to pack and then you can pull your stuff out and you know what the pieces that you pulled go together does that make sense so i'll put in a sweater i'll lay a necklace over i'll put my, my boots and my blazer take a picture so when i pull out a suitcase i'm not like Frazzled because you when you're traveling, you know, things can happen. And um, but especially if you want to polish and put together, go to your photo and you're like, oh, there it is. And that can give you a little bit of a sense of, you know, like you're styling yourself and you know, you've you've uh you've done a good job. Yeah, so she can have, have photo a... albums. She can have photo albums yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can never wear together again. Oh my gosh. I've always had this theory that women dress for other women that they really don't dress for men. And I, I don't think most men can tell you what, uh, uh, you know, an attractive a female wore at a certain time. They just remember, was that person attractive, not attractive, just uh, kind of were shallow. But it, but I always thought women dress for other women. Am, am I wrong in saying that? I mean, my husband doesn't love the high-waisted jeans. I wear them all the time. And, you know, I mean, there's certain things that we wear, you know, because they're stylish and fun and, you know they're not necessarily guys favorites but yeah i, th I think so. i would i think so to to some degree um Nicole, what do you I, think i think women dress for the gays <laughs> yeah. yes that's if, you, if you're a real fashionista you're fashion. you dressing for the gays yep. <laughs> absolutely yeah so i i yeah i think have fun with it play with it you know enjoy it pull inspiration you know if you see someone it's kind of funny i have some of my subscribers they'll take a picture of a woman on the street and and you know obviously hope they didn't see them but they take a picture i say where do i get this house and i'll be like okay well here's where you get it you know h m zara and they can put stuff together it's like pull your inspiration you know what you like you know what you feel good in and at the end of the day that's really all it's about 
Well, that's the thing, right? You should be dressing for yourself. You shouldn't be dressing for men or women or anybody in between. You should be dressing because when you like it and you feel good, that's when you radiate. Let's be honest. Like you can have somebody dress you if you feel awkward. Like I've gone to do shows and, you know, listen, the wardrobe people are who put your outfits together. I can't take credit for any of that ever. And, you know, you walk on some and you're like, oh my God, that's what they want me to wear. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And um, you feel terrible. So you kind of don't look that good, you know? And then other times you put it on and you're like, yes, they get it. Like, this is amazing. And, you know, I, I just think it's sort of the way you feel can just change how you walk in your outfit. And I was going to ask you, that's funny that you brought that because I was, what. When you went on set, because obviously you're there to do a job, you're there to work, you have lines of, you know, did you, were you collaborative with your outfits? Like, did you say, I'm, I'm not wearing it because that's going to throw me off or, or I love that. Or like, were you, is that something that was on your radar? Yeah. You know, and it kind of depends on who you're working for. So like, let's say for instance, some major networks that you really don't have much of a choice in it, right? That you have to, you have to say the lines that are written for you. You have to do this, you have to do that. But then there's other things where, yeah, you can have a bit of an input. Um, so like Charles in charge, for instance, for me, when we were doing Jamie, it was like, um, I always, I brought, a bit of more of an edginess to it than they particularly wanted. So there was a little bit of a battle there um, for a while. But it would be funny because, you know, you do like a dress rehearsal and then notes come back and it was always like shortener skirt by two inches. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I was like happening. Yeah. <laughs> The top. That's the note. Like, mm -hmm. what? Just short, <laughs> shorten the skirt. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think an Esprit skirt can get much shorter. Um, <laughs> you know? Oh my and, gosh. It just was funny, but certain things like I would throw in there, like I love this scrunchy sock. We were talking about this the other day and yeah. um, my daughter was putting on socks. And I was like, you should scrunch those or whatever. And she was kind of made a remark, a kind of about like, but you don't know how that works or whatever. And I was like, oh, oh. excuse me, excuse moi. Yeah. I want to talk about one of the first people to wear those huge, giant, scrunchy socks. Mm -hmm. It was me. Just and mess with me. I'll, I'll, absolutely. Every day with any pair of shoes, you named, I would wear them above my cowboy boots. I would wear them above my sneakers. I would wear them above those little weird, um, like golf looking shoes that I would get from Esprit. Like I would wear them with everything. Yeah. And, um, that was it. It was like this, I couldn't live without the scrunchy sock. And, uh, so that was something like that I had to sort of like say, no, we're going to wear those. And and they wouldn't be like in my dressing room, but I, then I, I would have them on personally and I'd still wear them. So when I go out to tape, it was too late. I was, I was already like being filmed with the scrunchy socks on. So that's great. You know, for some I things I that. had to slide in there. Yeah. yeah. Denim shorts and cowboy boots. That was the look you did that. I mean, that's, we were all rocking that in Canada. Cause you <laughs> so funny. So funny. Yeah. I loved my cowboy boots. I'd go down to Melrose and buy, like, I'd spend big money on cowboy boots. And, yeah. and then sometimes they'd have the big steel toe on them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was so into motorcycle boots. That was one I had to really push on Baywatch. They didn't think that was sexy. Yeah. So um, I had to, like, really, really strong arm and just push for those motorcycle boots with the uh, with the jean shorts. I remember that. Oh, my gosh. And you had the choker on Baywatch. So you brought back the, yeah. the choker in the Hotel Del Mar. With yes. the floral dress and the and that cho their chokers are everywhere. I mean, they're they're back. That dress I know. Back. <laughs> I know. I had to repurchase them all. You know, it's so funny. It's like if my kids had, could have seen my closet when I was their age, they would have loved it. Yeah. So yeah. Good. So good. I remember all of it. It's so funny. I have this roll right. of information. <laughs> so have you ever had pushback when you're sitting there and you're trying to dress somebody for a show and mm -hmm. they say no? I'm not doing that. I mean, how, how, how does that work? Well, I've, I'm, I'm not on Nicole's level at all. I was an extra. So I, I when I started, I was extra. So I was, they put whatever they wanted on me and I had to live with it. And that was, you know, kind of um, how that works. But when I'm on set, I was only there as a guest. So I was to go through the wardrobe to, you know, they would say, Hey, do you like this? And I'm like, no, she wore that three episodes ago, two, two seasons ago. Like that's where my mind went. Um, so I, when I was in the celebrity style guide, 
that was just me as, as a guest and, and just being there to kind of see the cage and see what was coming and to get a preview, meet, meet the, you know, the cast and all that. Uh, but when I started as an extra, and I was on Baywatch for a hot minute. I was in slow motion in a, I can't just <laughs> funny. I think it was a Zuma beach or something, but yeah. Um, and you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's $8 a day for 18 hours of work and you're just happy to be there. Like you don't have an opinion. <laughs> so yeah, I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. There's a lot of times they have an idea of what that character and that's their job. They, that yeah. they're to dress you and they have an idea of what it's all supposed to look like. And you probably really should roll with it. You know, yeah. it's, I, I think it's when you're creating a character and uh, you're like the regular, like when I did Jamie, I, I, I had to like, we had to create something. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little bit different, but yeah. what about do people like when they hire you? Cause I always find this interesting when they, or they, they, they go to you and they say like yeah. all this together, do, do you get people that are like, no, like oh, they okay. push back? Sorry. Yeah. That's probably what you meant. Um, no, I, I really don't. I think the people that come to me and are asking me genuinely for my help, they trust my, they trust my judgment. Um, I mean, I've had people say, no, that, that dress won't work for the wedding or that's, that's not kind of what I was looking for. I tend to do qualifying questions. Like I'm like, what are we shopping for? What's the look, what time of day, you know, who, you know, who, who's in the room, like read your room. Like I try to really bring it down to what they're looking for. So it is personal shopping or personal styling. Um, and I would feel bad if someone was like, no, I'm absolutely not wearing that, but I don't tend to go wild with people. Like I'm not putting them in pleather. And I'm not like, you know, like you're not taking them out of their comfort zone, no, really, right? Like no. you're staying yeah. within, like, yeah, yeah. Well, and I always ask them, like, who's your celebrity style spirit animal? Like, who do you, who do, you, who are you drawn to? Is it Jennifer Aniston? Is it Rachel Wilson? Um, you know, are we going Diane Keaton? Are we like, where, where are we? And that gives me a really good um, gauge of who I'm styling for. So, um, so yeah, I've had, I mean, I've had people say that's not what I'm looking for and then I'll find something else. But for the most part, I, I do enough due diligence to where I think I can get it pretty right the first time. Or I think this is a great service. I think this is, this is so amazing and so smart of you. It's so genius because, mm -hmm. you know, they have these, I see these, um, it's not listen i'm not going to spend money on a stylist really it's they're expensive and rightfully so listen yeah. they deserve every penny of it um and then i see all these services of like where you go online and you're in a computer you know yeah. and then you kind of check off i like this i like that and then they send you stuff in a box or like yeah. you get a delivery and what you like you keep you send back but they're supposed to like curate your style and yeah. i'm like i'm not going for that i'm not going for mm -hmm. that i'm not doing some computer generated like look so I think what you've come up with is amazing. How do people find and get this service from you? Well, they just go to my my Instagram, which is where I'm, I'm TikTok as well, but that's kind of the Wild West right now for me. So Instagram is really the place where, where you can find me. I'm really good about answering my community. Um, you know, I really try to, to, to communicate and, and talk to them and answer them. I mean, it's amazing when people say, I can't answer me, but they have a celeb style guide and the handle and they see the followers and they said they're like i'm not gonna answer like i'm not gonna you know it's gonna go out there and it'll be gone um it's my job it's my my day to go through and talk to these people and talk to my community and they can find me there ask me questions and then if they want to do the vip subscription there's a button um in the profile and there's also a highlight that says vip and that will guide them through and it's like 2.99 so i mean and they've got me you know, all the time. So, okay. This is wow. genius. This is genius. Everybody go check her out because that's like, she will get back to you. Yes. She has a lot of followers. She's got a, a huge community. So, um, but she will see, she will get back to you. And I think that people are shy, especially when it comes to fashion. I know yeah. I am. I get like, I don't feel like I'm good enough or I'm not worthy. And like, I, I, I get that like intimidation. So, um, you know, I, people do get shy about it. So yeah. don't be shy, people. Yeah, Stop. we're friendly. We're an amazing service. We're, yeah, it's a good group. And like I said, I'm not there to judge. I'm not there to, I can't believe you asked me that. Like, it's, you know, I love what I do. I love what I do. I have a passion for it. I enjoy it. It's not like you're bothering me. I get so many people saying, sorry to bother you. And I'm like, bother me? Thank you. I'm like, I love hearing from you. Like, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Yes. 
to do this. So I appreciate that, Nicole. Thank you so much. Yeah. So everybody go check it out again. What's the handle? At Celeb Style Guide. There you go. On Instagram is the best, the best one. Yes. And also TikTok. Thank yes. you so much for sharing with us. I'm going to check you out. I'm going to be a VIP. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm thrilled to talk with you guys. Thank you so much. So much fun. Thank so you. Their pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. That was that was cool. I, I was I was really interested in that. As I said to you, you know, a long time ago, I have a bunch of uh, female friends who I know will watch and listen to this show, and that was right up their alley too. And um, but as as guys, we always talk about you know how much time is put into girls getting dressed, and and let's be honest, it's it's so so much easier for for men. I mean, you were talking right at the very beginning of the show about. You try to knock things out in your day. If I'm going to put lipstick on and, and get dressed, I'm going to try and do more than one thing. I do the same thing. It's, it's a question of, am I going to comb my hair today or wear a hat? Am I going to wear you know, a hoodie or not? No, nope. it's so much easier for a guy. I mean, it takes me longer to to shave to line my beard up than it does to shower and comb my hair. And I'm, I'm out the door where I, I know it takes more time. Now, for guys, honestly, we, we're we're just checking girls out. We're looking at how attractive they are or not attractive and we can't remember what they wore and it's it's embarrassing to say we're as <laughs> shallow as we are um but I, when i talk to women who say all the time they go you know we're kind of dressing for each other because they feel like they're being judged is that fair at the same time for females to judge other females Listen, I mean, I think it's human nature that people sort of judge other people. I think it's horrible. I don't really judge other people. For me, if I'm looking, I'm kind of like, wow, I would have never thought to put that together or like, wow, did that take them forever? Or did they just throw that together and they just know how to do it? Some people just have that talent to just like know what goes well together and stay on trend and all that. And then there's other people like me where I get a little bit lost. So, um, and I think men too, I think some men care about what they they what do. they look like, especially if they've got an event coming up or a date or I don't know. So I think men struggle too a little bit. And they I think they have less places to go for inspiration and for help like that. I think it's more readily available for women. But um, so, you know, men can use the service too, which I think is is great. And you can't that's the thing. You can't care if anybody's judging you like this goes, yeah. this spills over into every aspect of life, right? Like you can't care, but that's why there's shows like Queer Eye. I don't know if you ever watch Queer Eye. It's just so fabulous where they go in and they give these people complete makeovers, but with the makeover is this like confident boost, you know, this like reassurance of like self-love and caring and that everybody's beautiful and everybody's got beautiful traits and, you know, playing up what, what your strengths are. So, um, you know, that's why these kind of shows work. I think you're right. As I say, you know, maybe it's, it's especially for people a little bit younger, but right now we're, you know, we and I basically right at the very beginning of our fifties and you, you look at people who, you know, let, let's say, you know, my son's age, who's in his twenties, I think fashion has changed a lot, especially with men where it used to be as simple as you can almost wear the same blazer every day. Just change your color shirt and your color tie, and no one will know you're wearing the same suit almost every every time you go out. But the shoe game has changed big time wow. for men. And yeah. it used to be, you know, the straight black dress shoe, and now you're just seeing different shoes at casual events, or you're seeing guys who are wearing, uh, you know, athletic shoes with suits. Even yeah. that it had the fashion game has changed dramatically i love the fact that you brought up the cowboy boots i, I own a pair of cowboy boots and I, and I love them it's still the most comfortable thing that that i can put on but it's like where am i going to wear these outside of a morgan wallen con concert you know <laughs> and so right. it, but you're right fashion has changed for for men too and um i, I think the service heather's offering is fantastic it's really cool yeah. i'm glad you brought her on yeah she's great she is so speaking she is. of right. what are you watching yeah. let's talk about what are we watching I have questions for you. All right. Okay. I, we got to start off with, for me, number one is Real Housewives of New York, because I thought maybe they took a really big gamble on switching everybody out because you always heard the ratings for the Real Housewives of New York were their number one Re Real Housewives franchise. And yet they said, everybody, you're gone. And they're bringing a whole nother group. And we saw the first episode and just the feeling for you off the top of your head. What do you think of the new cast? Okay, well, at first I wasn't sure, like seeing the previews and everything, because I was like so accustomed to like 
um, old school New York women. And, you know, um, this is just such a different genre, just such a different everything about it. But I'm hooked. I'm in. I'm in. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. But after watching the first episode, um, I'm in. I, I'm Me too. Me too. Oh. And I'm not a big change person, but I'm I, I'm in too. And you can kind of figure yeah. out which ones are the, you know, the the shit stirs kind of a, a way, which ones are trying to figure oh, out. And, and kind Who's of put... the Aaron's of them all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really like her. I like her, but she has got this like um, this really chill vibe, and yet she's like. I'm right under the bus. There's like, like they said, she's got a problem with somebody all the time. So it'll be interesting to see is she really that, or is that just like what she's given off for the first episode? And then Jenna, oh my God, I'm obsessed with Jenna. She yeah. just is like, how cool can you be? Like, so cool. Like, and that's like, so she's so New York. She's so like the antithesis of like New York to me. It's just like, how do you do it? How, are, how, how do you do all of that in a day and still look that cool? But okay. So again, I'm going to go into her, her style of clothes. Okay. Everything she wore, man, there are a lot of buttons missing on, on those <laughs> shirts. You know, I mean, yeah. it was way down. Like for a guy, I'm like, something's going to fall out any second. And, and, but every time she was on, she's wearing that same kind of deal. So she's obviously fashions her thing too. She knows what she's doing. I was, I was uncomfortable when those girls went into her closet, put her clothes on and they went for that hug. And I was like, Oh my God, they're going to ruin her clothes. They're going to yeah. ruin her clothes. Everything's going to stick cool. together. And, and yeah, I agree. Not a cool move. Right. No. And so no. It, it, it's like a Valentino but, you know, lace blazer thing. No, you don't mess with somebody's <laughs> stuff like that. I, I, I agree. And I've never worn any of that stuff, but at the same time, I knew this wasn't good, you know, and, but at the same time, it's great for the show. If, so, if a yeah. disaster happens, it's great for you and me who are sitting there watching. And it, it, so I only ask you about Bryn. What, what is your feeling on her? Is she a fake, you know, shit stir <laughs> or is she really her personality of, I'm just going to come in like, like a wrecking ball in every room I walk into. I think she's a wrecking ball. Um, it's really weird. She reminds me of an older version of, um, and I wish, I think the girl's name was like Daisy something May. She was on Southern Hospitality, that spinoff they did of Southern Charm of all those kids that worked in the bar. Yeah. She's, she's like an older version of that girl, the girl that everybody would always get annoyed with, who was always too much. Um, I just think... <sighs> She's good for entertainment for me. I just, right now, I'm just like, she's one of those people where it's like, when do you start acting your age? <laughs> but, you know, we, we need it. We need it for the show. It seems like she's um, a big flirt with all the guys. Doesn't yeah. have kids, like living her best life in her 30s. Um, Boundaries I, seem to be a problem. I can't really relate to. What? Yeah boundaries seem to be a problem in almost everything that she touches right yes whether it's and whether it's, it's men or close yeah and it seems like somebody blatantly lied already there's a blatant lie about whether cheese is weird or not <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. there's a, somebody is a liar <laughs> that's true that yeah. that's that's a, that's absolutely true all right so what else are you watching a lot of things are, are well, starting I watched, to come out um, the stuff you're interested love in. island oh what okay Sorry. A lot of things that are coming out right now of, of yeah. what you're interested in. So I know the audience is curious to you, you, basically your opinion on these. Well, Love Island premiered last night. Love Island US. I personally love the UK ones always. They're always my favorite because those they're just so, they're such genuine people. And of course, their accents are adorable. And um, the people from the UK are more open and um I think they play less games. They're more like vulnerable. Um, I feel like they're always a little bit more honest and they're just adorable. But the US version is out and um, oh my gosh. So in the beginning of the show, you you are so vulnerable. Everybody's in a bathing suit and swimwear. And um, if you haven't watched the show and then the the women are all lined up and then they bring the men out one at a time. And the man stands there in his swimwear and the women who are interested in him step forward and then he picks which one out of whoever stepped forward 
and that's how they first pair off. This poor guy, Victor, comes out. And I mean, he's adorable. He is not any less cute than anybody else. And um, he's got a little bit of a Jason Momoa vibe going on. And he's just a big, tall guy. He works out, you can tell. And none of the women step forward. And I just have this like, oh, my wow. heart. I'm just maybe I'm just oversensitive. It's like the mom in me. I, I my heart goes out to him. I'm like, oh my god, this poor guy standing here with no shirt on, and and just nobody steps forward. Meanwhile, this guy Marco, he's got like a couple girls on next to him, and I'm like, and I'm looking at them both, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. So I don't know who else saw it and agreed with me. And it's not that Marco isn't adorable, but he's not more adorable than Victor. <laughs> and um and I, it was so bizarre and then this guy um Bergy comes out and again nobody steps forward for him and he's a little bit more of a quirky character total gentleman sweet soul and um anyways at the end of the episode he ends up getting paired up with this girl and then they have to eliminate somebody and it comes down to them it's one of them has to go and he is a complete gentleman and he says okay I'll go you stay and he didn't even let it be, um, you know, up for discussion. He just did did the gentlemanly thing, which I thought was amazing because a lot of people, especially on these thirst trap shows, they don't yeah. do that. They're there because they want to, they want the experience, they want to be seen, they want to do it all. And he um, he politely bowed out, but it looks like they're going to bring him back, and it's like a, a twist. So it was like the game's not over, and so that's how we kind of left that episode. So that's exciting because I'm kind of rooting for him now because he's like the severe underdog. And then below deck um, reunions were on; they had two. And um, are do you watch? Have you watched the the latest? I, I'm trying feeling? to. I'm no. I'm trying to catch up with you now that because I, I didn't realize that was one of the shows that you're into. So Ugh. I'm like, all right. If Nicole says it's good, I got to catch up. Well, yes, of course, everything Bravo. Um, but there, so there's so many love triangles on this season. So you've got Gary who loves Daisy. Does he love Daisy? I say that with a question mark or is it his ego? And then um, Colin is finally single and Daisy's always had a thing for him. I think he's always had a thing for Daisy. So they start hooking up and Gary's super jealous. And I think his ego is like, because he's usually the man. He's the one that usually hooks up with all the girl. He's like the little sailing yacht slut. So um, he he gets his nose all put out of joint. Meanwhile, he's pursuing this girl, Mad, Mads, they call her, um, and hooking up with her. And she actually is more into Alex. But Alex is like more of a gentleman, is not going to push forward. He likes her too, but he's not going to um, – He's not going to step on his boss Gary's feet. And so then, so when the reunion, it's really fun to see how they can all like what happened after the show, once you're not working for these people. And so Alex and Mads, they seem to have kind of got together and um, it looks like both Gary and Colin are done with Daisy. And somehow Daisy looks like the bad guy in all of this and ends up in tears. And I just like, I was like, isn't that always the way when the male ego is broken they just turn around and just blame the female of course so um it was a good it was a good reunion i liked it so you gotta there catch you go. up you gotta catch i am up. i'm trying i'm trying to catch i'm trying i'm trying to catch up to it absolutely absolutely yeah so it, it's it's one of those where you're keeping everybody up to date on on what's happening and i'm trying to catch up too but uh people always want to know what is nicole watching because you give a pretty good a description of what's going on and and you get a chance to judge people's opinions against your own so um i i know for you it's a labor of love that you watch these shows but also for the audience they're curious to know it as well so i, I want to ask you about the what's happened right now with this whole writer strike because okay. for me as a fan of just television and, and i've never been you know in one of these you know, situations i was a, a member of of the union at one time because you had to be when you worked in los angeles but I, I, mine was on the, the radio side. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was more after. So when you guys are now in support, and you've, you've said all along from the beginning of the show, you're in full support. And so many other actors are coming out saying in, in full support. And, I, and in my head, I keep thinking, okay, how does this affect me, which most people do? When are my shows coming back? So you're hearing that, well, they aren't coming back in September. And at best, they might come back in January. And now you're hearing that things are pushed back even further. And as things go on and on, you know, I worry about people as you and I've talked about 
money wise, how much were they able to put away? Because you think in your mind, these checks continue to come and you, people plan their budgets out in their life, assuming the money is always going to be there. And how long do you think this, this lasts? who caves first? And at the same time, the people that you talk to, where are they at in, in this whole negotiation process? Well, so what we kind of have heard is that the studios were saying they're going to let the writers bleed out. They're, they have the, the studios have the money. They have the resources. They've got stuff in the bank that they can continue to air. They can pivot and do reality. Um, they still have newscasting. They have so many other things they can continue to do. Um but now that the actors are on strike, so now you're talking about both unions, um, work is completely stopped now. Now we are at a standstill. And it's scary. Um, it's really scary because some of us, this is how we make our living. And, you know, when you say how long can people last, it's like certain percentage. And I think they said, you know, it, it's something like one to two percent of union members are making huge money. The rest are people who are living paycheck to paycheck or have other jobs to actually, you know, um, live to make a living. So this is like, so anybody who's like in the middle there, who's relying on acting, um, or working to, to work in the industry, it's a hor it's a terrifying time because it is going to stop. And these studios, I, I read so many times, it's so aggravating and that they say, oh yeah, these poor actors, these poor actors, these poor writers, why don't they sell a yacht, you know, and, you know, da -da 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 -da, end world problems. And then you have to realize how much like a studio exec makes per episode when you're talking hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars compared to the actor who's making maybe hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? There's a huge, yes. huge salary gap. And I don't think people are understanding that. So if people aren't in support of it, you really got to do your, your fact checks because it, not everybody, most people in both unions are not wealthy, wealthy people. This is not, you know, they rely on this. We and and you know to be taken advantage of by people who are making hundreds of millions of dollars per episode is just mind blowing. Because all all people want is to make a living and to get their fair share and to get a little piece so that they can survive and you know support their families. And you know, and then on the other side of that coin, the studios are saying that the unions aren't being upfront about what the actual offers were with these deals and that they're making it seem like the studios didn't put forward. Um, so now it starts to get political and this is where I go, <laughs> I throw my hands up and I'm like, you'll never know unless you're in the room on those phone calls. You're never going to know what the real negotiations are. Uh, but I think with the writers standing in support of the writers, I'm hoping the actors in support of the writers, I'm hoping that this could bring a quicker resolution because, yeah. you know, you could do stuff without the writers, but without the writers and the actors, like you're really at a standstill. It's a real, it's, it's a real conundrum here. And it something's got to give. So, you know, it's not all about the AI. This is about streaming. Let's be honest. This is about streaming and sharing and the wealth of what streaming has brought. Yeah, it's, it's boy, I mean, as you said, there, there's so many things that you're hearing the options from the studios, that they have stuff already in the can, that they can run game shows at night. There's different things they can do to provide content for you. Um, I would not want to be a union leader because as soon as the studios at attack the union leaders like they have, when you say, well, they aren't relaying the, the proper messages that we're submitting to them back to you because they're just trying to break the union. They're trying to cause turmoil. I wouldn't want to be have that target. And uh, somebody always has to be a voice, but this is not an easy situation. Worst one that I can remember as someone that's, you know, grew up watching TV. Worst, this is the, the worst one I can remember. Well, yeah, I've been through many strikes, writers and actors, but um, never with them together. So it's yeah. a big, it's a big deal. And, um, you know, like I said, it's the streaming is, is a huge deal because it's, you know, actors and writers, you live off residuals too. Those residuals are helpful. This isn't, you know, this isn't just 
throw away money. You 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 take a certain amount of pay, which is still nothing next to what the the network executives take, and you work for it. But you're working because you know you're going to get those residuals. So every time it plays, every time it airs, you get paid again. You get a check in the mail, and I call it mailbox money because it's like um you go to your mailbox and you're like, oh, somebody's airing Baywatch. Say you know like I, I know when somebody's streaming Baywatch. But the thing is, is that streaming, when you negotiated those original contracts, streaming wasn't a thing. So when they resell these shows and then they play the hell out of it, you're not getting your fair share because there's no, there's nothing in writing about it. And, exactly. um, and going forward, it needs to be addressed. And of course the AI is a big deal and does need to be addressed, especially for writers. Um, actors too, I just find it a little bit, I find it a little bit strange that AI I, you know, robot people would um, replace actors so quickly. I think people like watching real people, but exactly, you know, That's we right. don't know what our future is. We we don't know what the future is. So, um, yeah, it's scary. It's really, and for somebody like me, it's terrifying because this is like what I re I rely on. I don't have another job. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, it's panic mode. You know, one of the things that's happening as I'm, we're doing the show today, I'm in San Diego and Comic-Con's going on and Comic-Con's always a really big deal here in, in San Diego. And there have been actors saying, I'm excited that it, it's happening because it gives me a chance to actually make a little bit of money. Um, have you ever been part of anything like a Comic-Con or any kind of event where you, you know, just said, hey, I'm going to put myself out there in public and get a chance to to meet the fans? Yeah, I do. I, I have done some. I don't, I, not a lot, but I've done some. Um, I have one booked in November, which I'll talk about as we get closer. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, because listen, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, <laughs> pay all the bills, but it, you know, it does put some cash in your pocket. You do get to meet your fans and give back to your fans in a way because they're so happy that you're there and they get to meet you and talk to you and, you know, talk about what they think about the show and your character and on and on and on. So it's it's giving back. It's fun. It's different. Um, it's just so different than anything else we do. So, um, yeah, I do them sometimes. I do. Good. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting. All right, real quick before we uh, before we get on out of here, I want to do a little Nicole's mailbag. What I did today was I just grabbed a variety of topics and I, I looked at I put them together, kind of of a getting to know Nicole stuff about you that maybe people don't know, and okay. uh, just gonna throw five random ones at you, and uh, they're from all over. Again, if you want to ask questions, to Nicole, all you have to do is go to the website perfectlytwistedpod.com. It's Nicole's mailbag. It's right there at the top, and uh, submit your questions. So uh, first one is not counting your kids, Nicole. What is your favorite topic to talk about? Oh, my favorite topic to talk about. Um, this is so boring, but work. <laughs> like I don't think when it, I'm not yeah. being a mom, I just yeah. I, I'm always working. And um, but for me, like what I do and the things I do, I, I don't really consider it work. So I don't ever I, I rarely turn it off. Um so, you know, for me, it's just always what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What, what can we do? Who, who are we meeting? What are we talking about? Da, 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 sharing ideas. So um, for me, it's just always like the industry, always yeah. pop culture, always that everything to just keep going. I don't think it's boring. It's your passion. It, yeah. You know, if you have a passion for it, of course. So, no, I don't think that it's boring at all. Here's actually my, my, my favorite one in the list. What is the one thing about Nicole that everyone should know if they want to be your friend? Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not super social. <laughs> um, so you have to forgive me that I'm not going to go out all the time. And um, I'm more of a homebody. And I like honesty. Like, I cannot take bullshit. I cannot take smoke up my ass. I don't like yes people. I like people to be honest. And, um, I like highly motivated people who, um, who are just always thinking, always having ideas. And so for me, it's like, I, I, yeah, I'm just less of a social, I'm less of a social butterfly like that. I'm kind of boring. I don't want to go out. And uh, occasionally I do, I do do that, but I, it's like, you know, I've got an 11 year old, I'm going to barbecue at my house. Let's do back, backyard barbecue, not go out to a bar or something like that. If that makes sense, I'm more of that yeah. person. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand completely. All right, Nicole, what is your favorite? Where is your favorite place to go on a vacation? Anywhere tropical, 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 tropical. Um, Hawaii is usually my go-to because it's so close. It's yeah. close. It's easy. You don't have to, you know, have your passport and go through all of that. Um, especially with little kids on the airplane. Um, my little one was a nightmare on airplanes, like nightmare. It was so embarrassing and so hard. So, um, I haven't traveled. I didn't travel as much with her as a little one because she just was uh, uh, unbelievable. She was that kid that you were like that kid on the airplane. <laughs> she was her. And, um, so Hawaii was it. That's as far as we go, but I love anything tropical. Me too. Me too. What's uh, been your favorite career moment? Do you have a moment in your career where you go that, that, that was a really good time. I really have great memories. Um, I think, honestly, I think working with George Cooker on rich and famous and knowing, um, the legend that he was and, um, the movies that he had directed and to like put my eyes on him and watch him in action. And he, was so giving you know I was just a kid on set I played Meg Ryan as a little girl I was only in for a little bit but he really gave me time and gave me advice and talked to me and and he was so cute um and he kind of had this little belly as in his older age and he would stand up and he'd be you know really passionate about something and his pants would fall down <laughs> <laughs> pull his pants back up um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, because that belt was around the belly and the legs were thin. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I thought, man, he just was such an artist. Such an artist. And it was the last film he directed. And um, I don't know. He really just kind of had me in awe and I was in love. Perfect. All right, last question. What song, is there a song, I should say, that reminds you of your childhood? Okay, well, there's an album. Okay, let's okay, go with perfect. Prince. Love let's it. go with Prince, 1999, Purple Rain, that whole, everything Prince. Prince, yeah. Prince, 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 Prince. That was like uh, on repeat. It was absolutely on repeat. I love that. Al I still to this day love that al album. So um, that'll take me right back. Love it. Love it. All right, that yeah. was that. That's it. That's all five. That's all five questions. But again, uh, Nicole's mailbag. It's open right there. Perfectlytwistedpod.com, and uh, feel free to ask podcast. questions. Podcast.com, perfectlytwistedpodcast.com, and please subscribe to us. And if you can, leave us a review and a rating because um, we need those. And I saw some of you left some, and I really appreciate it. And you said such kind things. So please keep those coming, and um, we're gonna get to a giveaway as soon as we can get like a hundred reviews um we are gonna we're gonna pick somebody and send you a, a good little gift so Perfect. please do that and i hope you enjoyed today and we will see you next week